Well, we just got here to um, the Mount Cook Airport. Uh, it's bloody pearl of a day. Couldn't ask for much better, really. Uh, we're just going to head up into a valley over yonder, yonder hills up there. Um, yeah, chasing bull tail on this mission. Well, we got dropped off at the hut pretty early by the helicopter this morning um, and we've hightailed it up on, up onto the snow. It's pretty hard going about way steep some of it, so not that fun. Um, Jared and the, his, the other mate um, we're hunting with have been sitting way down there on a knob looking across those faces over there. Um, they've spied 15. Um, we've been looking all up through here. Um, we haven't seen anything yet. We were just gonna go up over there, but then um, they came up and told us, so might come up with another plan or might shoot over there, have a look at them. And well, we've moved to the next basin along. Now we're gonna look for some tar, try to pick up some tar. Um, uh, there's 15 bulls down, oh no, 15 tar down there, I think two bulls, that's where Jared and his mate's gone. Um, so we're just going to look up and up in these bluffs up around in here, hopefully pick something out. Here's the group of tar that Daniel and Jared are heading over to. They're a fair way away but there's some nice bulls in that group so I reckon they can handle it. Well, we're on the move again. Um, we're going to head back to the um, first basin we scouted out and then drop down lower because we think all the bulls are down low since the only ones we've seen uh, were down there. We got word from the helicopter pilot that he hasn't been seeing them up high. Um, so, yeah, we're going to drop down a bit and then glass all that down there. Hopefully, spot something. Spotted one lonely tar way way down there. Um, we'll chuck the spotter up on it. Um, see where it is. See if it's a bull. Can't really see through the binoculars. Uh, there's a bull tar that we saw. It doesn't look too big, but we're just gonna drop down and come over on top of it, try to see how close we can get and um, have a look at it then. Um, if we don't show sure, just video it. down to the bull. Hopefully he's still there. Uh, it's taken us a wee while because it's just so much snow and um, you don't know where the drop-offs are and everything. So you just got to be cautious and you know don't want any avalanches or anything so 
we're just going where we think's the safest, really, not the quickest. Want to get out of here alive. He's out of our sight now, so that means he can't see us, hopefully. Hopefully he isn't buggered off. Well, we're about halfway down now. Um, it's all easy now, or relatively. No more bluffs or anything to navigate, just straight down there. Hopefully he's still there. Haven't seen him since um, we had the spotting scope up way up the top. So we're just about 50 to 100 metres away. You can see it just over there, up there, the lip. And I'm going to sneak up there and hopefully he's still there. Or something's there anyway, because we came from all the way up there. Way up there. Um, it's getting on in the day about 2.30. this cut if he even if he is there or isn't there hopefully we can get down it so we can get onto the flats and hopefully it doesn't bluff out otherwise we'll have to go all the way over there oh no way over somewhere over there I can't get in the camera and then go try and find another way down well we just got down here and I started recording them and then they walked out of sight so we're gonna move on to the next knob just down there somewhere and then hopefully we can see them from there Yeah. See them both. just a few juvenile tar. Um, I think the plan is now to head down this gut, see if we can get out of it, or if we can't, jump over the ridge and find a way down and back to the hut. Well, it's all good so far coming down this gut. Um, it was a bit sketchy back up there, but it looks all good now. Looks like I might get a bit sketchy down there, but Hopefully we'll be alright. Sorry for the lack of video footage yesterday. It's been interesting getting off the hill and back to the hut. With only um, tuna and crackers for the whole day. Box of tuna and crackers. But we got off the mountain just on dark and... We had 4k back to the hut with shin deep snow, which was a bit energy sapping. I left dad about halfway, went off without him, and Jared and Daniel were behind him, and they caught up to him, I think. Jared and dad were a bit, they were completely stuffed when they got to back to the hut. Uh, it took us, well, it took me about three hours to walk 4k back to the hut and it took them four, four and a half it might take me three and a half actually but I don't know they got back in at around 10.30 I got back 9.30 completely frozen everything, my gaiters, my boots frozen my, my even my pants were frozen half of it and Jared and Daniel's socks were frozen to the inside of their boots. They actually j chucked them in front of the heater this morning that we brought in to actually just get the socks out of their boots because 
Yeah, otherwise, couldn't put them on. Um, Dan, Jared have just gone back, oh, and Daniel have just gone back to retrieve their packs they left out there last night. Hopefully, everything's all good. And then, no, about, Jared's is about 1.5k down, and Dad's is 700 metres, so, yeah. Maybe go for a spot tip for Tar Basavo. I'll try to give you guys a quick retour around the hut. Uh, it's a beautiful day, as you can see. Um, so here's the hut. Got the entrance here. Gun cabinet, pantry, steel bench with all the food. Everything's hanging up and drying. Six bunker. Boys are just returning from getting their packs, which they left out last night since they were a bit too tired to carry it back. We're just leaving on an afternoon hunt. Going to head down the valley and glass a few faces, look for some tar. Hopefully spot some out. Hopefully they're not up too high. Let's go. We're just going to stop at a rock up here and glass all these faces up in there. On those bluffs. The tar should be moving about now. It's um, three, bang on 3.30. So yeah, get the spotting scope out. Have a look. We just spotted a group of eight tar way up in the mountains um it doesn't look like there's any big bulls so we're going to push on down the valley and glass a bit more country Well, we've just stopped at our next glassing point. Hopefully, see some more tar up in all these bluffs. We've just spotted a fairly decent sized bull about 2k away up in the bluffs. Well, I think we're going to call it a day and head back to the hut now. Seen a few tiles this evening, which is good. I forgot to tell you guys, but um, yesterday, Daniel and Jared both shot a tar each. Uh, it was Daniel's first ever tar, which is quite cool. He, uh, I think it was um, 11 three quarters inch. And Jared's one was like right, 12 and twelve and three quarters. Or so, yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, quite, uh, Jared took the head skin off his. And I'll show you guys it. We're just back at the hut now. So. Look at those ones that tonight and what well, the last one you spotted? Yeah, that last one. It's wonderful. Yeah. Those other ones were oh, if it wasn't such snowy, yeah, it would be. Yeah. yeah. 
be a long day. <laughs> it's another absolute stunner of a day. Couldn't ask for much better, really. Not a cloud in the sky, not a breath of wind. We're going to head down the valley this morning, like we did last night, and then continue on about half a k more, and then glass up into the bluffs. And if there's anything worthwhile going up there for, we'll head up there and try and look something over. Mm. Well, there's a few real mature, real mature bulls that we've spotted from here. Um, we're just going to cruise down the valley and then cut up into the, the bluffs up in there. So far we've closed the gap to around 400 metres, so we're just going to climb up there behind me um, and then hopefully find a spot to shoot at, uh, shoot at him. Well, Jared and I got to here and it was pretty steep, so we decided to turn around and let the other two head off on their own. They later realised that they weren't going to make it up to the top and it got too steep, so they turned around and came back down to us. We've been sitting for half an hour. It's been hard going all along trying to get up here to the bulls. Um, we've got bluffed out a few times. It's about taken us a few hours to get from the valley floor up to here so I don't think the bulls are still going to be here they might though we've just got to get up to there so we can start looking across onto the big bluffs We started to pick out a few tar, a few bulls, a few nannies, but not the ones we came over for. Uh, we spotted a pretty mature looking bull that I didn't get on camera, so we headed over to the next gully so Dad and Daniel could have a crack at it. Daniel and uh, yeah, Daniel and Dad just had a crack at a pretty mature looking bull. Way, way over there, uh, about 300 meters. They had about three shots each. Um, they didn't knock it over though. I think their gun's a bit out. Don't know. So we're going to head back to the hut now. Um, the sun's just got dipping behind the hills. Now, well, we just stopped on the way down to glass some more country. We spotted about four or five bulls in total, heaps of nannies. But there's one way up on the skyline up there that we think probably cracked 13 inches. But um, as you can see, it's just bluff, bluffy, real bluffy. And if we did come, want to come back tomorrow and shoot it you'd shoot it but then um, would fall down into a bluff and 
probably be a slim chance that you get it. Well, we've just spotted a bull um, about the same level with us, so we're gonna cruise on over to it. It's about 500 meters away. We're gonna see how close we can get. It's just over there. Uh, we'll see how close we can get. It might might take have a shot at it if it's big enough. Well, that tar buggered off out of sight, so we're gonna head back to camp. I just spied two people, uh, three people, walking along the flats from, um, well, down this valley. Um, probably coming to our hut. It's a, it's a six bunker, and we've got four in there already. So yeah, they're gonna be shit out of luck, but. Yeah, so they still got to cross the ice cold river, but we're going to boost it up to the hut before they get there, so. We just got back to the hut. Now we're going to settle in for the night some dinner then welcome our guests I guess one of them are gonna have to um, top and tail we're just leaving the hut on our final day of hunting in the hills uh, we're gonna head down to where we left off last night and try hunt those bulls that dad and um, Daniel tried to get before dark so hopefully they're still there because they're down quite low actually. Well we're just sitting here glassing the um, bluffs and about a K down the valley, not too high up, there's two good mature bulls fighting. Just gonna head up to where the bulls are. Um, Jared's gonna stay on the valley floor and direct us to them via uh, radio. So yeah, we can't see them right now, but we're gonna head up into those bluffs up there and hopefully find them. Above the other, 
um, what like 60 meters between them, or well, I don't know how many meters between them, but they're both bedded down, and the smaller one I think is bedded on top. So we're just going to sneak over this ridge, get into position. Well, it was all go as soon as the tar smelt us. I uh, gave Dad the video camera to capture it all on film, but it is pretty useless to that aspect of it. Didn't even manage to press the play button. He was too busy yelling at Jared through the radio asking where the F and tar were. But we got the tar in the end. Daniel knocked it over with a pearl of a shot as it was running full tit away from us. Uh, Daniel was pretty stoked. It went. It was just under 12 inches, and well, that's pretty good for its first recoverable ball. So they're just going to take the skin off it. I think he's going to get that tanned, and they're going to take the skull off it, so he can prove to his mates that he did actually shoot one, not just in the photo. Once we'd finished skinning Daniel's bull, we moved on to the next glassing spot to look for a tar for Dad. Um, we spotted a few good looking bulls. Daniel and I didn't really want to go with them all the way up the hill to shoot a tar. So we headed back to camp and left them, well, left Jared and Dad to head up the hill in search of a bigger and better tar for dead. Well it's about six o'clock now. Um I've been back at the hut for about an hour. Jared and Dad still haven't come back yet. Can't see them yet. So oh yeah when we left them they were going up up to the bull around three o'clock. Um and the bull they're hoping was going to feed down, so don't know where they are. Maybe not off the hill yet if they've shot something and cutting it up, or they might be just around the corner. So we're having some cheese and crackers and Milo and coffee. Can't get anything better. Well, Dad got his tar. It's a pretty nice one actually, a lot of characteristics in its horns. Uh, it's pretty mature as well. I think 10 years, it would have gone 12 and 3 quarters if it hadn't boomed off all of its tips. But that just adds to the characteristics, so he's going to get it mounted. And uh, It's everyone but me shot one this trip. Daniel got his first, always good, and we're just taking photos of them now. Chucking all the gear on the helicopter pad and then we're out to get a pie and a milkshake.